So, welcome back. This is MTR Fab, and I'm back working on the RC mower project. I've got the bumper that you guys, I guess I'm calling it the bumper, um, but you guys saw the beginnings of this last week. I got some more pieces made up, and I just kind of wanted to share with you guys the process before I go and just get it done. Um, basically, there's a little tubular chassis here. This is some one inch square stock. This is some half inch square stock. This is some two inch square stock. Um, hanging all this up like that. And basically, I'm going to build a three inch wall all the way around this. And before I do that, I wanted to make a floor. And that's that. And as you can see, I stopped early which I can show you why. Um, and when I say stopped early, I'm talking about, you know, this piece is small all the way around, and it's supposed to be. So, with these pieces that go on here, and, and basically I'm just loosely putting this together real quick to share with you. Like I said before, I just go get it done. Um, I haven't deburred any of these little bits, so there's one side that's got nubs on it and one side that really doesn't. But you get the idea. Uh, and then I'm going to go around the outside. The outside of uh, all of this with a piece of this material right here. Now, the original plan was to get some 3 inch flat stock um, that was 8 inch thick and then I wouldn't have had any need for these corner braces and all these little pieces I could have just gone with it on the outside here and it would have been rigid enough but this leaves for some options to to mount a cover on here that's gonna have that switch panel in it so tools to kind of clean all this stuff up I'm gonna use a roll lock wheel a little compressed air uh, I've got the welder out for when I'm ready to start tacking stuff together got a couple different squares. I've got a sliding T-square and then I've got a fixed, you know, framer, like a roofing framer square. Um, this is great for what you see. It's tacking up pieces. It's aluminum so the weld doesn't actually stick to it and if you can kind of stay away from the aluminum, they last forever. Uh, and if you do happen to get a burn mark in it, I mean, usually it just wipes off and you file it out and you can use it again. Um, so, have couple of these laying around. There's also a piece of scrap that I might use to uh, help myself clamp stuff together. Uh, and then I got a flap disc to kind of clean up. This is a really coarse, I believe it's 32 grit. This is an 80 grit disc. So I'm going to get this stuff cleaned up and then I'll show you guys uh, the pieces after they're cleaned and then we'll start tacking it together. So things to touch on here. Uh, I got this piece. Remember we talked about how it's undersized? It's undersized for a reason, and so it fits, fits in there so I can tack it in without worrying about grinding a bunch of stuff off to fit my other pieces, right? So I can just pretty much by eye kind of narrow the gap all the way around, spot weld it. If you notice I spot welded it in the middle instead of at the top or at the bottom. I'm going to work my way from basically the middle out uh, both directions and, and that's how I like to tack stuff together so you can see the movement. Um, you can catch stuff if it's out of alignment pretty quick that way. So it's a good place to start. The other thing you'll notice is I got a ground clamp. I'm using the ground clamp to kind of hold the corner of the piece down too. Um, you know, I'm using the stuff that's already in my way to help me hold the stuff that, that I need to hold. So uh, with that, uh, I'm going to continue on tacking together. And uh, oh, I'll touch base on the Every time you MIG, MIG tack something, you should try to just tap it with a hammer. It's going gonna, it's gonna to expand slightly and likely lift. So you tap it back down, but don't just use any old hammer. I mean, I, I like to have something with like a round face. You see how that's got a curve to it. Um, that's a nice hammer to use. It's a body hammer. You might not want to use this on body work anymore as it's going to have a bunch of dimples and stuff, but I pretty much dedicated this one to tacking stuff together. It's what I prefer to use. It's got, nice point on the back side in case I need to get in the corners. Um, it's a good tool to have around at your bench uh, as you're going along. So I wanted to talk about this real quick. I, I just realized I kind of got ahead of myself. I started tacking all this stuff to the back before I realized I hadn't welded up all the top sides of this stuff. 
Um, so that's one recommendation I have for you. You know, be paying attention. I had some pieces on here that I had to take off so I could get this back on so I can tack this down in the proper spot and have a nice easy job of welding it. Once it's in the box, it's going to be difficult to tack it. So now's the time to do it without all this side stuff in my way. So just, you know, step back and pay attention to what you're doing. So you can see the tack sequence, uh, but the technique was basically I'm, I'm holding the metal down where I'm going to weld and I'm actually using uh, the tip of the hammer as a place to kind of prop my cup on my MIG gun and shoot in that gap uh, and just blip on for two seconds off and then I have the opportunity to hit it with a hammer, right? Uh, basically, I'm not going to tack this any more than I've got to. It's sheet metal. It's going to hold in there. It's inside a box. Um, the, this is costing me money and gas and materials and there's no reason to sit here and weld this thing all the way in it's not going to benefit me any. Uh, this is probably as much tacking as it needs. Before I come down here, this measurement, I actually forgot to notch this corner. Um, I've got to notch this so this piece actually sits up in. So before I tack this down, I'm going to I'm going to go through and, and notch it um, out. So when I go to put this piece on, I'm not obstructed, and uh, it'll all work out well. All right, back to it. All right, got it all tacked together, the floor on, and I'm going to start putting these pieces up around. And then we'll connect them together, and then we'll skin the outside of it. All right, so that's how it's at now. You can see I've got all my uprights put up. This uh, I can now clamp to the actual chassis, which I'm going to do here shortly, but that's basically the next step, I think. Um, I want to get these on but get them on nice and parallel to the top so when I put my lid on everything is nice and flush so I think I'm gonna build the rest of this up on the chassis so I'm gonna go inside and knock that down and get it so I can flip it around and play with it and yeah that sounds funny all right so this is what it kind of looks like at this point we've got the frame mocked up I think that's going to be where the batteries are, so they're as far back on the leverage point and taking as much weight off the front wheels as we can naturally. The controller is likely going to sit there. I think I can do away with the terminal strip that we were planning on putting in here because last time I used the terminal strip to tie two 12 volts together to get 24 volts, but if you look at the terminals here, they're B plus and B minus, so I could actually just make a jumper uh, to parallel these two battery packs together because these battery packs are already the finished voltage that I want um, instead of the last setup. So these are, you know, 22.2 volt packs, and I'm going to run them for the 24 volt system, and I should be good to go. But this is why I put it on here is to see what it looks like. Uh, ultimately, everything is going to be flush with the top of this uh, channel, or, or this tubing here. So, if you can envision it, there'll be some more framing. It's going to go all the way around the edge. But that's going to give me a nice flat top here. And I'm going to basically build a lid that covers that whole thing. And just goes over it and then I'll put the switch panel in it and I should be good to go all right guys I think this is all I got for this week it's getting kind of dark and gloomy outside I got more little pieces to cut and uh, this kind of ended up being more than I really wanted but it's all right we'll just keep going and it'll eventually get done so that's what we got for this week uh, please like comment, subscribe. Um, I'll see you guys next week. I'm out.